Morning, church. How are you all? I see so many children this morning here. Okay? The Lord has a special mission for you. Okay? Among so many thousands of uh, people, one day, when there were over 10,000 people gathering about around Jesus, there was a special boy. And he was willing to what? To share the lunch that the mother had prepared. Amazing, right? And how that boy was able to share that, what? Three loaves of bread? Two fishes? What can you do? How many people you can feed with that? But what did, what did Jesus do? <laughs> he multiplied them, right? As he prayed, the angel kept what? Providing, providing. And just men alone without the children and the woman, there were over 10,000 people. God's still in command to feed the people of the world. And he's looking for also children that are willing to go in the name of Jesus and to share the love of God. And we'll see him, a number of children sharing the word of God. A few years ago, we have a boy in Jamaica preaching the word of God. And people never heard a boy like that preaching. Like a preacher. They, could, they couldn't believe. They just couldn't believe. See, when God takes possession of one's will, one life, nothing is impossible for God to carry out his what? His purpose, his desire. So we must be willing to allow God to take over. We cannot change ourselves. Doesn't matter how much we try. Only the Lord has the power to change us, to melt us, as we humble ourselves, as we allow him to take over. And then we can become real bread of life to people that needs the Lord. I have encountered drug addicts on the streets. I cannot curse them. I had to tell them that there's God loves them, that God cares for them, that God, they're special to, say, you think so? <laughs> I just don't think so. I know. I was not a drug addict. But I didn't want to have anything to do with the Lord. It's just like so many people. that We have encountered people that they say, God, nobody loves me. God loves them. And that's why we must bring the love of God. So glad to see you this morning, my dear uh, sister and brother from the U.S. Virgin Islands. <laughs> So good to be here. We just returned from Puerto Rico evangelism. What a blessed experience. We're glad to be here and see so many uh, brothers and sisters, so many friends, and to be able to share God's uh, concern, you know, for us. Talking about unity of life, of unity of the love of God. We need that bonding bonding of the God of love because we are special to the Lord. And Jesus died for everyone. Doesn't matter how degraded a human being can become. I have seen some of these people allowing God to penetrate in their life and to change them. 
that even the, their relatives, is that you? And that happened in the Bible. The number of situations in the Bible when people couldn't believe that. How the Lord can change a life when we allow him to do. And that's why also God has the health message so that we can also understand in our minds the purpose of God for us. Even in the midst of sin, if we allow the Lord to take complete control, it can enable us to live a healthy life. Amen? Amen. And that's how it is. So we go to this, uh, our t text uh, this morning, it's almost afternoon, I won't to take too long, talking about a unity in Christ, that Christ prayed that, that his disciples will become what? One, one with him, and one with one, one another. The members of the Church of God on this earth are as the different parts of a machine. Just like the body, we have so many, so many pieces, right? If we, so many things, so many organs, so many nerves, so many muscles, ligaments, so many bones. Hmm? And yet, they all what? Make what? One body. So even this finger that is Maybe the the one the most weak one, right? That is, the, it's not as strong as this one or this one. But do we need it? So we also need one another. No man is an island. No man can live for himself. No woman. We live. We need one another. And we need to learn to what? Love one another. Not to hate anybody. Doesn't matter what they do. But to love them. The thing that we are called to hate is sin. By the grace of God. I had to go to Africa. And what happened in Burundi. And all that. So many things that happened. Even Christian people. Killed others. And one case that a man killed the entire family. Yet, for his astonishment, because I, I, I had to use that word, uh, astonishment, that person that came to care for him was one that her relatives were killed by him. To love him, to care. And he asked, how in the world you can love me? I kill all your members, all your family. Because God loves is in me. To love you, to care for you. Only the Lord, only a living God can do that. Because it's when somebody hurts you, what you want to do? Hmm? Somebody hits you, what you want to do? Huh? Only when we allow the Lord to take full control of our will, of our life, and to mold us, it's amazing. Just like Jesus did with those people that were demon-possessed. It's amazing. They came to attack the Lord. Even the disciples, they fled. But when they came to attack the Lord, they bent down. They knelt. They worshiped God. They recognized that the only one that has the power to what? To deliver them from the power and the snail of Satan was that one that they want to attack. Yet, Jesus in his heart knew that they needed what? Liberty. That they needed freedom. And only Jesus. 
So all of us are special to God. Praise the name of the Lord. Even though we're sinners, we are special to him. Because God so loved you. Don't think about the whole world there. God so loved you. What is your name? That he gave one. His only one. Are we willing to do that? It's not easy. But yet God allowed the Lord to do that. Because God wants us all to be with him. That's why I had to ask the Lord a number, a number of times. Why do you love me? I didn't want to love you. I didn't want to have anything to do with you. But somebody pray. That's why we need intercessory prayer. We need that. More than ever, we need to ask the Lord. Get down. And even if we cannot, I can still do it. Even if, if we cannot bend down, sit down. Spend quality time with the Lord. And ask the Lord, Lord, I want to be passionate with you. Because God is real. I don't, I don't believe in, in, in a dead God. I have to believe in a living God, a mighty God that can do so many things. That's because what is impossible for human beings to do? Nothing is impossible for God. And when we come to the knowledge of the Lord, it's amazing what the Lord can do. Even people I know in the church, they hardly had any education. But they, when they place themselves in the mighty hands of God, it's just amazing. I know a lady right now that she hardly have any education. But who gives the wisdom? <laughs> she? People coming to the church, I don't know what to do. I don't know, I don't know how to do anything. Place yourself in the mighty hands of God. Pray and ask the Lord. Lord, equip me. Lord, enable me. He's going to do it. Just like a lady that I met in New York City, my ministry, from Cuba. She didn't know, she didn't have any school. Yes, she was a servant of God. And she asked the Lord one day, Lord, I want to learn how to read the word of God. Teach me, Lord, teach me. And the Lord did it. She couldn't read from other things, but she could read the Bible. Unbelievable. But I, I, I put the, the Bible in front of her, and she could read. That's what they love. There's nothing is impossible for the Lord. And that's why God is, we're talking about a unified body. Because we need one another. Okay? No member of the Lord firm can work successfully in independence. Detached from the others. We need one another. All are the you are to use what the what entrusted capabilities in his service that each may minister to the perfection of the whole of the body. Each is to work under the supervision of God. That's why we need the Holy Spirit so much. He is the one that is going to enable us, to change us, to melt us, to transform us. To use us so that we can what? Reveal the love of God. The power of God to change the life. And many people, they're not going to see God unless they will see it through us. That's a challenge. That's the challenge. And one, one of these before my time is over, I, I want to go into Acts 4.13. He said this is one of the challenges that uh, is also in front of us uh, in the time in which we're living. Uh, Acts 4.13. That's when, when Peter was talking about, neither is there salvation to in any other, 
for there is none other, none other name under heaven given among men, whereby we must what? Be saved. Now when they saw the boldness of Peter and John, and perceived, perceived that they were what? Unlearned and ignorant men. The two key words in here. The people perceived that they were unlearned and ignorant men. They marveled. And they took knowledge of them that they had been. They had been what? With Jesus. When we are with Jesus, he makes everything different. He makes it. It's just amazing. Because when I came to the church, I could hardly talk. I was very quiet. And now who can believe? <laughs> it's just like that. And we have made people. That's why you say nothing is impossible to God. The only possibility that, that God has is when we don't believe. But if we believe, God, you say in your word this and that. And God delights when we kneel, when we humble ourselves and ask him his promises. That's why, that's why, that's why God revealed himself to these men, unlearned men. Jesus did not pick up saying people. <laughs> Jesus pick up uh, and call people that... <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> Two of them were called what, sons of thunder, right? <laughs> and that's one of the magnificent work that the Lord has. When we allow the Lord to change us, it's amazing. Others will see. And that's what the Lord, that's what the world needs today. The world needs to see Jesus in his disciples, in his church. The Lord also needs all kinds of skillful workmen, women. And he gave some. See, he appointed some like apostles and, and then prophets and, and preachers and whatever and teachers. To each person, God has given at least one talent. And then we just had to come to the Lord. Because sometimes, you know, I don't know what to do. We have, I had to repeat that in the church. They have come to me, Pastor, I don't know what to do. I don't know. Then I start asking questions. You do this, this, that, and that. Just place your hand in the mighty hand of God. And he's going to enable you. Yeah. Then later, but I cannot believe. I cannot believe. Well, just believe the Lord. Just trust the Lord. Okay? Each worker in every branch of work in the Lord's vineyard must have a head and heart sanctified through truth to enable him to see not merely the part of the work which is under his supervision. But his relation to the great hall, when the workers are consecrated to God, they will reveal the love of God for their brethren who work under the unseen divine master worker. We are co what? co-laborers with the Lord. No one in our church is above the other, and no one is under the other. We are equal. That's why we have to accept one another and love one another and support one another. That's why I had to say we're special to God. Because when I, we have met people, you know, so degraded, and yet how the Lord can bring them back to life. For me, that's greater than when the Lord can resurrect a person. Because in my ministry, we have seen two, two of our brethren being delivered from the dead. The medical doctor said, no way, he's dead. One a lady and one a man, a male. But when the church pray, uh, when the Lord goes down in prayer, when we humble ourselves, when we believe the Lord, 
and the doctor couldn't believe. One of them, when they opened the, 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 the skull, the blood, shoo, they just go. Oh, well. When God has a purpose, nothing is impossible. Okay? But for me, that's not the greatest miracle. The greatest miracle is what we just read. When the Lord can change a life from misery, from the crime, from drug addiction, from alcohol, from whatever, mess up. How the Lord can, can bring a life to a newness of life. And it's amazing how the Lord revealed himself. But that happens only when we allow the Lord to become real. And when we become one, one with another in the church, loving one another, supporting one another, praying for one another, allowing the Lord to take full control, there can be no growth or fruitfulness in the life that is centered in self. Talk of the love of Christ. Tell of his goodness. Do every duty that presents itself. Carry the burdens of swords upon your heart. And by every means in your power, seek to save the lost. As you receive the spirit of Christ, the spirit of unselfish love and labor for others, you will grow and bring forth fruit to honor God. That's how God becomes real in the life of people. The graces of the Holy Spirit will ripen in your character. That's why we had to be molded. We had to be. Uh, 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 we had to allow the Lord to take full control. Your faith will increase. Your conviction deepens. Your love be made perfect. That's the work of the Holy Spirit. More and more you will reflect the likeness of Christ in all that is pure, noble, and lovely. Christ's object lesson, page sixty-seven. It's amazing. I love that thought. How special we are to the Lord. And that's why we need to seek the Lord in prayer. Believe in the Lord. God hears every word. But not, not every time God says yes. <laughs> we have to learn how to wait upon the Lord. That's one of the most difficult things that the Christian has. It's not only believing. Okay? Trusting God. Praying, waiting for it. It takes time. It takes time. In some instances, we have heard prayers just like amazingly by, while in the church. And all it take, might take weeks, months, or years. But God hears the prayer. It penetrates in the hearts of God. And that's why a union of believers with Christ will, as a natural result, lead to a union with one another. Praise the Lord. Which bond of union in the most enduring upon earth. And that's why when we, are, when we become brothers and sisters, that's real family. The bonding is more significant. When you are my brother, when you are my sister, when I am your brother, when I am your... It's amazing. It's something, something that only a living God can do. Because how can we uh, accept or live with one another, trusting one another, helping one another, loving one another, unless we know the person? And yet, by God's grace, it's amazing what he can do. <laughs> I had to, I, had, I had just had to celebrate the goodness of God. And that's why we all special to the Lord. That's the, that's the, 
one of the most effective uh, uh, way that the Lord, or, uh, for me, is the most effective way that the Lord can manifest himself into the world when people can see what? The revelation of God, the love of God, the, transform, the transforming power of God in the life of people that used to hate God. Like a prisoner that came to us in parts of Mexico. Even, even the guards were afraid of him. He used to curse. He used to speak. Oh, that terrible. It was an opening. And one day the Lord revealed, came to that and spoke to him. I am, who are you? I am Jesus. I don't know you, but I know you. I don't love you, but I love you. Because you're special to me. I die for you. And that's when the, he began to cry. Because that was another case where people believe that nobody cares, that people believe, and even we have also young people, nobody loves them. There is one that loves you and love you above every, everybody else, and that's Jesus. And it was amazing how the Lord began to change the life of that prisoner. He was to die. But the change, the transforming power of the Lord in the life of that man was so evident that they could hardly believe. They just couldn't believe their eyes. Because he was so ugly. When I say ugly, because he was so wicked, wicked. But listen, when the Lord takes over, Satan had to go. He had to go two enemies cannot dwell in the same place at the same time and that's why we we had to allow the Lord to take full control of our will so that others can see what Jesus Jesus at the hope of what of glory and unless we do that we can live here separately. But when we become one with Jesus, we cannot separate from one another because God made that a real experience in changing, in transforming the life of people that cannot change themselves. Because I have dealt with people, drug addicts, especially alcoholics. I'm gonna say, they never do. They don't mean. Only one day allow the Lord. Because he's the one to get the glory. And he's the one that can take the, the devil out. Completely. That's why we need to surrender our will, our life to the Lord. And when we do that, Satan begins to shake up. If Satan, there's something that the devil hates, something that he trembles when he sees the people of God what on their knees. That's what I love. Second Chronicles 7, uh, 4, 14. <laughs> I, I, we don't have time more to go on under that. But we need, we need to understand that Christianity is a living experience with a real God, with a real Savior. It's not a theoretical teaching. God must be what real. And God must reveal himself in our life, in our family. Because the people need to see Jesus more than ever in the life of those who profess to be Christians. And Jesus is soon to come. The world is so full of what? Of hatred. So full of what? Calamity. Look what is happening right now. I'm suffering. In Maui, 
So many people had died. Do we need to pray? That's Hawaii. Oh, my dear. We need to pray for one another. We need to pray for the people in the world, in all the areas of the world. And as we come closer to the Lord, in that experience, we're going to see greater miracles taking place. Because when God changes us, he also will use us so that others can be changed. Are we willing to allow the Lord to take complete control as we come to the close of the service today? And as we close, also come to the time, scientists shall don't know what to do, what to say. Look what is happening. And I believe that if the people of God pray more, fast more, the Lord will do. It happens last year in Australia. A call was sent to the people of God to pray and fast. So many millions of animals, pray. so many of our acres of land were destroyed. Well, when our people began to pray and fast, the Lord intervened and started sending rain. His hand still stretch out to reach and that's why I love, I love, and we're going to finish with that. Second Chronicles 7, 14. Second Chronicles 7, 14. <clears throat> if my people, which are what? Called by my name. My people, if, if my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face. Three things in there. Okay? If we humble ourselves and pray and seek the face of God and turn from their wicked ways, if we have anything that is against the Lord's will, to put it on the side, confess and humble us, sir. What's going to do? What the Lord is going to do? I will hear from heaven. Praise the Lord. And I will forgive their sin. And I will what? Hear the land. That's what the Lord is going to do. His hand is still outstretched. And he's waiting upon us to seek him to depend on him and allow him to take him from control. And that's why we need to understand that uh, Satan doesn't want God's people <laughs> to seek him in, 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 in prayer and in fasting. And I finish with this last name. There is nothing Nothing that Satan fears so much as the people of God shall clear the way by removing every hindrance so that the Lord can pour out his spirit, Holy Spirit, upon a languishing church and an impenitent congregation. If Satan has his way, there will never be another awakening, great or small, to the end of time, but we are not ignorant of his devices. We're not ignorant of that. It is possible to resist his power. When the way is prepared for the Spirit of God, the blessing will come. Praise the Lord. The blessing will come. Satan. 
Satan can no more hinder a shower of blessing from descending upon God's people than he can close what? The windows of heaven. That rain cannot come upon the earth. Wicked men and devils cannot hinder the work of God. Amen. Praise the Lord. Or shut out his presence from the assemblies of his people. If they will with subdue, contrite heart, subdue, contrite heart, confess and put away their sins and in faith claim the promises. Every temptation, every opposing influence, whether open or secret, may be successfully resisted. Not by my, not by power, but by my Holy Spirit. Zechariah 4, 6. That's what we need. The Holy Spirit. That's why we need, we need to have thirst and quench after the Spirit, God, my people. Like never before. In, in the time which we're living, we need the Lord more than life. More than ever. And we need to pray for this nation. We love this nation. This nation has, has, be, has received so many people from other areas. And yet, we need to pray. And if my people do that, the promises of God will be fulfilled. May the Lord bless you, keep you. May the Holy Spirit put that urgency in every one of us, beginning with me. I'm not, I'm not a saint. I'm a sinner saved by grace. We still have to go in a prayer and depend on the Lord. See, and that's why I'm asking the Lord to give me the passion to give it all to the Lord because he gave it all. He left the kingdom of glory to die on that rugged cross. That's why we need to contemplate him. That's why we're special. Never say that you don't have any value. We have value. Otherwise, the Lord have, will never have died for us. We are we are valueless before God. May the Lord bless you and keep you until his win. The Lord bless you. Amen. Are we willing? Amen. How many of you? I cannot finish without, without seeing the hands of the heart. God knows the heart. We only see the hands. The Lord bless you.